FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. It's Monday, and we always go to, everything happens on a Monday also, we always go to our resident foreign policy expert. He is with D.C. International Advisory and former advisor to former VP Dick Cheney, Stephen Yates. Happy Monday to you, sir. Hi, Dana. Great to be back with you. It's always good to have you. This story I was reading, and and again, this comes down to a case of the foreign media seemingly doing a better job of covering issues related to our country than our own American media. But this headline from the Daily Mail was very unnerving. Chinese government hacks into White House office in charge, the office in charge of nuclear launch codes. The White House confirmed it. They downplayed it, said that it was unsuccessful, no damage is done, so I, that's the end of the story. But isn't that, Stephen, that would, in, it seems like that should be classified as like an act of war. Well, certainly cyber attacks are uh, an, an act of war, uh, information warfare at the very least. Uh, but when you're specifically trying to compromise national command authorities, uh, that's very aggressive. It is definitely a hostile act. Uh, now, what they were able to get in this case, uh, I mean, it would be very, very difficult for anyone outside very limited channels to say those classified systems have layers and layers of security. I find it very unlikely that the classified system, system was compromised. But the nature and frequency of these attacks constantly aimed at the White House uh, and the Pentagon and Famously, it didn't even take that much to go after the diplomatic cables uh, were clearly under attack. Right. I wonder if this means that if, if this is considered a, a big deal, if, if the WikiLeaks thing, I guess, the United States will consider that a big deal. It, it, this, it just it, it seems so that that they went after that particular office and the way that the White House played it down so quickly, it just it, it sounded very it just really was off putting. To, to see that. But um, I mean, maybe so, so you're, you think it, it just it probably isn't anything. It's more so the frequency, not so much this particular incident. Well, I think it's very significant in that they've made clear that this is a target of great interest to them, that they have marshaled increasingly sophisticated capabilities to go after it. I just have my doubts about whether they were able to get to the right. most sensitive information that was alluded to in some of the reports about getting to the nuclear codes, the, the system that talks about where the president's locations are and movements and things like that. I mean, there's no question this is a very sensitive target that they are after. The fact that they have that intention and increasing capability, I think, is quite serious. Yes, very much so. And it, it just seems that we have these hostilities with China keep growing and growing and China's hostilities with Japan also growing and growing. And that's something that uh, the White House is another thing that the White the White House seems to be downplaying every anything that has to do with foreign policy. And I realize that it's a weakness for this president. Uh, but how concerned do we as Americans need to be about the ongoing, the, it seems, the, the seemingly escalating skirmish between China and Japan over um, several islands that Japan had purchased from private owners? So the, the, the fundamentals of the dispute are not that alarming. But the problem is that there's a huge escalation risk. And there's a very low probability that average Americans are going to get the truth because the establishment of our foreign policy communities in the United States are far too apologetic to China. Uh, and so China is actually taking very aggressive maritime claims. Uh, these islands were not just recently purchased private property. Uh, they have been effectively controlled by Japan since the 1800s. So there really is no legitimate claim uh, that the, for the Chinese to say these are their islands. Uh, and so, I mean, really, I think the American public has very limited capability to understand that they're right. saying something more about the expansionism of China. Right. Yeah. Well, that's something definitely that is uh, I, I'm sure we'll be watching and, and as especially as we get closer to November. Moving back to looking uh, to towards the Middle East theater here, we had uh, over the weekend – Three more NATO, NATO soldiers killed in Afghanistan, 14 total dead in recent weeks. Not something that we've heard the White House mention. There has not been any sort of presser about this particular incident. Uh, we have more and more of it. It seems as though we have these um, uh, these these Afghan fighters who are supposed to be on our side that end up turning on our own soldiers and then this coupled with a report that I was reading from uh, Michael Yan earlier about how it seems that U.S. troops in Afghanistan are told that they're not going to receive any more close air support. First of all, what do you make of all of this? And are we now 
it, it are we now in an issue in a situation where we're in Afghanistan, but we're really restricted in what we can do, and we the objectives are kind of cloudy? I'm trying to make sense of all of this. Well, you and all of us are trying to make sense of it, and unfortunately, I think you're close to the mark in terms of where we are currently. I mean, my business partner and I put an op-ed out in 2009 before the president gave his West Point address, where he gave the contradictory statement of a timeline for withdrawal and a vague commitment of increased troops. We thought from that moment forward what he's really seeking to do is manage failure. Uh, we were pilloried by the National Review and a number of other establishment uh, outlets, uh, but I think, unfortunately, it's true. Once, once you signal to the enemy that you have a timeline for withdrawal, uh, the people you try to collaborate with realize you're going to leave them behind, and they've got to make deals with the devil that stays. Uh, and we just have our troops out there in an increasingly untenable situation. Uh, it was extremely sad and maddening to hear General Allen, who I think the world of, have to say something like, we're willing to make an enormous sacrifice for this mission, but we're not willing to just stand out there and be murdered. Right. Uh, it's just an amazing indictment of the ineptitude and neglect this administration has had for real strategy in that theater. And it was it was um, it was August of this year, wasn't it? That it was the deadliest month for our soldiers in the entirety of our conflict in Afghanistan. Absolutely true, oh. and it's it's because of basically hanging ourselves out there on this timeline winding down, uh, and an enemy that is poised to take advantage of withdrawal. The White House's refusal to even acknowledge this, uh, to say anything about, it was something that I know that we were we were used to seeing with the Bush administration. And I don't know if people just became acclimated to it. And it's because we, it, or I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure, but we don't see the Obama administration remarking on it in the way that previous admins had done. Uh, not even... Uh, not even acknowledging that, you know, August was the deadliest month or that here we have now 14 total dead in recent weeks. And just it seems like every weekend there's another uh, there's another announcement of more troop deaths as a result of, you know, we, we don't know who we can trust in Afghanistan. And I, I don't know if the administration just avoiding it for election purposes or if they just I, I'm not quite sure what the intent is. I, I, you know, I think, you know, as you said, none of us really do at this point. Right. Well, it's, a, it's extremely frustrating and maddening. I mean, my own personal belief is that they have an ideological view that is hostile to the military, that does not want to admit that terrorists are an outgrowth of a radical ideology that is militantly against us, uh, that killing a few of their leaders, as wonderful as that may be, doesn't a strategy make. And we are actually in a less safe position. They dare not see the world as it presents itself uh, and frankly, it's a neuralgic point that they will pay somewhat attention to an assassinated ambassador, but even that's been a disgrace. But worse, why are the values of these soldiers any less than those who died in Benghazi? Exactly. Exactly. I want to switch it up a little bit and ask you about this particular uh, situation that we're now seeing reported upon from, uh, the, again, foreign press. It's like I have to – It's for, I, all of this, all of this is coming from foreign press, not American media. But – it seemed when we have everything going on in the Middle East, it seems I, this sends such an odd message, I'm sure, to those who we are identifying as our enemies over in Afghanistan and so on and so forth. We have a report that uh, filmmakers in Hollywood now are terrified of inciting retribution against America. So now any films that are apparently uh, having to do with Osama bin Laden or anything of that, uh, it, it appears that uh, their filmmakers are being asked to submit them to executives I don't, who have been in touch with the State Department, uh, that they, they want to preview them, them before they go forward. This, it, this seems like we're just, we have our troops overseas, but we're going ahead and waving the white flag here. Well, this is just an amazing jumble of American politics. I mean, we had such a strong reaction from Hollywood against government control uh, all the way through the World War II period and into the Cold War, and yet they seem to be engaging in profound self-censorship and collusion with government in a way that, you know, at least I as a conservative find very discomforting. I have no confidence that bureaucrats in the State Department are going to make good judgment about what appropriate debate is in American society. Uh, and I, you know, I thought that Hollywood was in it for 
profits, reaching an audience, yeah, maybe make a point here, but they seem to really lost their way if this was their guiding principles are now. Exactly. And Ugh. you can't make these people not be offended. They want right. to be offended. They want to attack. That is the point. That is, that gets it, right? They want to be. They'll find something. It doesn't matter. They want to be offended. And so, yeah, there's nothing that we can do. That we, and, unless we, and, until we deny who we are as, as Westerners, as Americans, and lie prostrate in front of them, they're not, well, even then, who knows if they would be happy. But uh, it seems that we keep moving towards that more and more with policies like this. Stephen Yates, DCI, uh, DCIadvisory.org, DC International Advisory. Always a pleasure, Stephen. Thanks for sharing your brain cells, your expertise with us every Monday. Always a pleasure, Damon. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.